Hello, I'm Graham Horton and welcome to part three of this brand new series looking at the Panasonic Lumix FZ8082 camera for beginners. Now apologies in the late running of part three due to a number of health situations that have occurred. I've not been able to get out and shoot this part three for you, but hopefully today is going to be an exception. We've got great sunshine today, no wind, no rain, and my health is almost perfect. So hopefully we're going to get this one done today. So today we're looking at probably one of the most important features of the camera and that is the exposure metering circuit. Now exposure metering is responsible for giving you the correct exposure in any lighting situations and to help you the camera's got three metering modes. You see them on screen now, we've got the whole area, we've got the centre weighted and we've got the spot metering. It's up to you to decide which is going to be the most relevant for the type of shot you're taking. The spot metering is the most difficult to use but is the most precise and you, with care you can actually use it to evaluate the whole scene contrast range from its brightest highlights to its darkest shadows and you can discover then whether it's going to be within the camera's capabilities of recording that whole range. Unfortunately with these small sensor cameras we are restricted to the number of f-stops difference between the brightest highlight and the darkest shadow so in most situations like today we're not going to be able to capture the whole range of tones between the brightest highlights and the deepest shadow so we've got to make some compromise and then normally we want to maintain the uh, highlights it doesn't matter if the shadows block up a little bit we're more interested in the highlights we don't want the highlights to burn out once we lose detail in the highlights there's no way you can recover it so you end up with a scene with lots of burned out totally white exposures with no detail in them now in some situations that could be due to specular reflections on glass, on water, on metal. So you'd expect there to be a very bright area there, so you, your eyes expect that to happen. But in general terms with normal photography, you don't want the highlights in the scene to be overexposed as the scene looks wrong and you can't recover it. In this video I'm going to show you which of the metering modes to use for which situation and the reason why you would do that. And then I'm going to show you how the camera can get fooled with some metering situations. For example, if you're shooting a product on a bright white background, such as you would want if you're trying to display something for a sale on eBay or something like that, you want a nice bright white background, not one that's grey. But if you set up your product on a white sheet, the camera will underexpose because it's trying to make that white area a neutral grey. And that will then cause the whole scene to be underexposed, so you'll end up with a grey background and an underexposed subject. So in that situation, we can correct for what the camera's seeing by using what's called exposure value compensation, or EV for short. Now the whole purpose of the metering circuit is to try and get you a mid-tone grey that is recorded in the centre of the camera's brightness range. If we take a typical scene, if we take the shadows to be black at 0% and the whites to be 100%, our normal eye brightness for neutral mid-tone grey is 50%. In digital terms, if we look at that value on our computer, we'd see that black is a digital value of 0 and white has a digital value of 255 and our neutral grey is right in the middle at 128. So with a normal exposure we'd expect to see the neutral greys to come in at something like 128 and you could actually use something like the pipette tool in Photoshop to establish whether you've got the right exposure. If you were to set up a scene with a white background the camera is overly biasing towards the background and making your exposure underexposed as you can see with the shots on screen now. So these two little dolls on a white background first of all shot with the whole area metering mode followed by the centre weighted and then followed by spot and I set the spot on one of the faces of one of the dolls to try and get the mid-tone accuracy. So you can see with the whole area and with the centre weighted the whole scene tends to be slightly underexposed. You notice that because the white background isn't white, it's slightly grey. If you were to shoot the same two dolls on a black card, again the black background would influence the camera's exposure and it would cause it to overexpose. It tries to make that black background back into a neutral grey with a value of 128. So it means that your whole scene will be overexposed in this case and you'll find that the black is now grey and your subjects are underexposed, they look to be washed out. So again, you've got the same situation whether you're using whole area, centre weighted, and it's only when you use the spot metering, when it's selected on a neutral subject, you'll get the right exposure. Now, I know this is a series aimed at beginners, and I didn't want to go into two overly technical issues with this particular series, but it's interesting to note that if you were to purchase a neutral grey card, and these have a reflectivity 
of 18%. It's found that the 18% reflectance equals our 50% brightness that we see with our eyes. So these 18% reflectance cards are ideal for such an exposure in tricky lighting situation. You can use a spot metering mode of the camera to meter from this card in the same light that your subject is, look at the exposure the camera's giving, and then set that up as a manual exposure. So if you measured this in aperture priority mode and you saw it was 1 25th at f5.6, then you could set that value in, in the manual exposure and be sure you will get the right exposure. They come in different sizes. This one is a 8x6 card. You can get them into A4, you can get them smaller. You can even get them as a small uh, 6x4 card. On the other side of that one is a color checker. Again, you've got all the color palettes which are used to create profiles for your camera, but more importantly, we've got white, we've got the mid-tone gray, and we've got a, a dark gray towards black. So providing we meter from this particular slot here, we will get the correct exposure. And you'll notice then whether you've got the correct range between uh, highlights, which are going to be white, and the shadows, which are going to be dark. So these sort of charts can give you the correct exposure in typical lighting situations. It can also tell you whether you've got the right white balance if you're shooting in a mixed light between ambient and, say, a tungsten light, so you can get the correct white balance by using, again, the gray card to give you a custom white balance setting, but we'll look at that in a later video. Now you can see on screen now a situation where I have used the grey card to establish the right exposure. The white cars on a white background, but I wanted to maintain the overall brightness of the scene without those whites going burned out or without the whites going grey. So by using the neutral grey card, using spot metering with the camera to establish the exposure, setting that up into the manual mode, then we can get the correct exposure to use for that particular shot. Providing the lighting doesn't change in the time you've mated the card and set your camera and taken the shot, then you'll get have the right exposure as you can see on screen now. I've got a set of three grey cards here, which are three by two inch. It comes as a set of three. You've got the white, the mid-tone grey, and the black. And again, you can use these. You can put the three of these in your shot, your control shot. And then in Photoshop or whatever the editing tool you've got, you can set your contrast by using the pipette on the white and on the black and on the grey to set you the white, mid-tone and black points and that will give you the correct exposure as well in your shot. It's ideal if you're shooting in RAW, you can get the exposure uh, perfectly accurate. Uh, otherwise, with your JPEGs or TIFF, whichever file format you're using, you can actually get the exposure correct by just using the neutral grey component, the centre one here. So they're useful if you want to get your exposures correct. Uh, again, you can use them for white balance, either use the white card or use the neutral grey just to make sure that the target is covered in the camera and then perform your white balance adjustment and you'll get the correct white balance. Now, some of you that have been familiar with the camera for a little bit longer than sort of a beginner, you've probably noticed that there is a feature called a histogram. And the histogram can be turned on and uh, placed on your viewing screen and where you want it to be. And the histogram gives you a representation of the scene brightness from the highlights, which are over on the right hand side, which represent the 255. And on the left hand side of the graph, you've got the blacks, which are the shadows. And your scene should fall somewhere between the blacks and the whites. Ideally, if you were to shoot a neutral gray card, it would be right in the center of that histogram. It does take some uh, practice to understand what the histogram is telling you because you can end up with a situation where you've got a very small subject on a very large background and the camera will look as though it's totally giving you an over or underexposed image. So understanding how to read the histogram with a variety of subjects becomes something that you have to learn by experience. But it does give you an idea on a natural scene whether you've got your exposure right. The mid-tone should be somewhere in the center of the camera screen. You shouldn't have anything clipping on the right-hand side, which means you've lost highlight detail. And anything clipping on the left-hand side means you've lost some of the shadows. Like I said in the introduction, on a day like today, the scene brightness is far too much for the camera to record all the detail in the highlights and all the detail in the shadow. So when you've got your mid-tones correct, you'll probably find that the highlights have begun to uh, get clipped on the right-hand side and your shadows may be clipped on the left-hand side. If you're shooting in, say, a studio situation, then you can reduce the contrast range by adding additional lights or by bouncing light back with a reflector or a white card. You can control the range at which the camera is being asked to capture that image. So in, in studio lights, that's a little bit more easy to control. Sometimes outdoors, I will use a, a white card reflector if I'm shooting plants or I'll use a diffuser to put between the light source and the subject 
to again reduce the contrast and reduce the risk of the highlights or shadows being lost in that process. So those sort of techniques you can learn and practice and get the best exposures. So in conjunction with using your grey cards, softening the light if necessary using the diffuser and by using that uh, factor that you can control the amount of contrast by using reflective cards, you can get some decent shots with the FZ8082. Standard rules apply, always try and shoot at the lowest ISO, so set your ISO down to 80 if you can, and then again set the uh, aperture to the widest at the widest angle setting, so you're going to be using f2.8, and then as you zoom in the camera will automatically start to close down, close down the aperture. Just use what the camera is giving you and you'll be guaranteed some better results than using the f5.9 or above that you might select if you're using a longer telephoto. So try to keep the maximum light going into that camera and you will be rewarded with decent images from this camera. So today is not the best day for the FZ8082. Uh, you'd think that a bright sunny day is an ideal way for taking photographs with the camera, but you'll notice some of the shots that I've been taking today, the highlights or the shadows will suffer and you can't do anything about that in a landscape environment. So. You just have to learn to live with that and hope if you're shooting in RAW you might be able to pull back some of the highlights or lift some of the shadows but with most of those if you lift the shadows you'll tend to see noise. Noise is predominant in uh, areas of equal tone so skies and uh, subjects without any contrast tone in there you'll notice you see a lot more noise that's just the nature of photography with sensors and digital imaging. So that's it for today's video. I hope you did find that useful. If you're a new viewer, why not hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon and you'll be able to those when I upload the next video in this series. And that is going to be on the focus modes. And learning you to use the focus modes is probably again one of the key features with this camera. Learning the limitations of which focus mode will give you what and when to switch to different focus modes to suit the subject or the genre of photography that you're trying to capture. So look forward to bringing you that in not too distant future hopefully not going to get two or three weeks between that and today's video so hopefully I'm going to be able to shoot that early next week for you beyond that we're going to be looking at shooting video with the camera and again you can get some great video with this especially if you shoot in the 4k and even if you have to down res that to 1080 for your applications you will be rewarded with some great video using some hints and tips that I'll be showing you along the way so hopefully you'll follow me for that so Make sure you click that subscribe button and if you do like the video series why not share it and put it out a little bit further and it will help my viewing figures so that would be fantastic if you do that. So until the next video thanks again for watching please do take care and I hope to see you all very very soon.